Islamic theology, the Prophet Muhammad is considered al insan of Gamil, which is the perfect man. He is the model par excellence to be imitated. He is the person that the more a Muslim is like him, the better off he is. So the Prophet Muhammad is revered today in the Islamic world as the primary model of human behavior. There's a lot of antsiness out here now because of ISIS and what right. people see on TV. And yet, uh, at the same time, this is a religion that is ancient, that is honorable, that is venerable. Why is it that we get confused between the two? We don't do it with Christianity because there's a lot of terrorism going on <laughs> and being promoted in the identity movement and white supremacist sure. groups within uh, Christianity itself. Now, let's begin with a little perspective here. I will agree that there are many, many hate groups in America, upwards of a thousand most likely many of them claiming to be Christian, although they are the farthest thing from biblical Christianity. And as we can see by this statistical report from the FBI, that there have been over 6,000 hate crime incidents involving over 7,000 offenses. And these offenses include such things as vandalism, intimidation, assault, rape, and even murder. However, only 19.8% of these involved religious bias. And of these over 6,000 incidents reported, in 2011, only four persons were murdered, and unfortunately, seven were forcibly raped. The Quran occupies a place that has no parallel in Western civilization. The Quran is considered by Muslims and by traditional Islamic theology to be dictated word for word by God himself, by Allah himself through the angel Gabriel to the prophet Muhammad. As a result, every word of it is the words of God himself. Every word of the Quran, unless it is canceled by another section of the Quran itself, is valid for all time and cannot be questioned, cannot be reformed, cannot be changed within an Islamic context. This means that moderate Muslims, peaceful Muslims, if they are sincere, have to reject entirely Quranic literalism. But to do so puts them outside the sphere of anything that has been considered orthodox Islam throughout history. Because to do so is to reject the very basic premise of Islam that this is a book that is dictated by God and is a perfect copy of a perfect book, the Umm al-Kitab, the, the mother of the book that has existed forever with Allah in heaven. Yes, there are atrocities that are committed and we condemn these things on both sides. But we as Muslims need to be at a higher level at a higher standard, as the Creator tells us in the verbatim Word of God, the Qur'an, to repel evil with what is better, not worse. It's very important to understand that the Qur'an is not arranged chronologically. It's arranged on, simply on the basis of the longest chapter to the shortest. And so you will find in the book itself some of these more tolerant verses at a later point in the book than the very intolerant ones advocating violence and subjugation of infidels. But that doesn't mean they came into being later on. Quite the contrary. If there is ever a contradiction between two injunctions, the ones that came later on in Medina uh, are the ones that retain their validity and the early ones from Mecca have been abrogated. Traditional Islamic theology has it that the ninth chapter of the Quran, Surah 9, is the last revealed in the career of the Prophet. And it is the only one that doesn't begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. Some have said that that's because there's no compassion or mercy in this particular chapter and that it is the Quran's last word on jihad and in particular on how Muslims should behave toward unbelievers. In it is the celebrated verse of the sword. And what does the verse of the sword say? It's very clear. That when the forbidden months are over, kill the people of the book wherever you find them. Lay siege for them. Lay wait for them. Lay ambush for them. Kill them wherever you find them. Uh, in fact, I converted to Christianity. Muhammad clearly stated that in the ends of days, there will be many who defect from the faith. Kill them when you see them, wherever you find them. So, this is the question that the West needs to understand. What part of kill don't they understand? And God Almighty has sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the last and final messenger, who was a brother to Jesus and Moses, they all brought the same message, worship the Creator, not the creation, do good deeds. And we fear doing any injustice to a human being, to even an animal. 
Well, when Muhammad, uh, the Prophet of Islam, wiped out all the Jews from Saudi Arabia, there were three tribes, Banu Nadir, Banu Quraida, Banu Qaynuqa. We were proudly studying this in school as Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, uh, ordered the beheading of the Jews of Banu Quraida and the women being taken as concubines. Uh, as soon as uh, a child had pubic hair, he was beheaded. So the, the Jewish population was either extradited or beheaded. The story of Rabbi Tanina is a well-known documented story in Islam. Rabbi Tanina was tortured by the order of the Prophet of Islam himself. Uh, his eyes were put out. He was burned uh, in order to confess where the uh, Jewish tribes were hiding their, their goods, their gold and their silver and all those kind of things. And this is right from the Hadith. I know myself that the more I study Islam, the more I look at the evidences and proofs, it makes me a better human being, helps me to be more merciful and loving, because this is what Islam teaches. The Quran is simply a set of uh, direct commandments or else narratives, descriptions, sometimes very distorted descriptions of uh, Judaism and Christianity. Because of the normative nature of uh, those commandments, uh, the second important body uh, for Islamic jurisprudence and for Islamic uh, uh, polity is the tradition of the Prophet, the Hadith. Now, the Hadith are absolutely necessary to make any sense of the Quran because Allah addresses Muhammad in the Quran and they talk about incidents in Muhammad's life, but they don't fill in the narrative details. So you have to go to the Hadith, the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, in order to understand what's being said in the Quran and why. The Hadith are many, many volumes of traditions of the Prophet. Various Muslim scholars, beginning in the 8th century, which is some considerable time after the, the life of the Prophet Muhammad, who died in 632, they started to collect these traditions and to try through various means to winnow out the authentic ones from the inauthentic. From an Islamic standpoint, if something that Muhammad said or did is recorded in one of those books, then it has authority second only to the Quran. And in those books, there is a great deal that illuminates what the Quran says and how it is applicable to Muslims in the present. And in those books, we have very clear instructions from the Prophet Muhammad that it is uh, the responsibility of Muslims to meet the unbelievers on the battlefield, to invite them either to accept Islam or to accept second-class dhimmi status, dhimmi status, in the Islamic State. And if they refuse both of those, then to wage war against them. No Muslim in his right mind who knows Islam can even think about beheading or killing an innocent person, because this is clear, if the Prophet Muhammad, Allah calls him, God calls him as a mercy to the world. He was sent as a mercy to the world, and God Almighty tells us that he will not have mercy on those who do not have mercy to the, his creatures on earth. So, Islam is free of this, free of terrorism and all these other crazy, barbaric things that our, people are trying to associate with it. There, there simply is no trying to associate Islamic terrorism with Islam. You just look at the statistics. From 2000 to today, we have over 4,495 terrorist attacks that resulted in the murder of innocent people. And this isn't including all the things that ISIS has been doing in Iraq and Syria, uh, wholesale slaughtering people groups and Christian missionaries, and other Muslims who they consider apostates. Defenders of Islam insist it is a peaceful religion. Others disagree and point to the primitive treatment in Muslim countries of women and other minorities. Does Islam promote violence? Islam doesn't promote violence or peace. Islam is just a religion, and like every religion in the world, it depends on what you bring to it. If you're a violent person, your Islam, your Judaism, your Christianity, your Hinduism is going to be violent. There are Buddhist, marauding Buddhist monks in Myanmar slaughtering women and children. Does Buddhism promote violence? Of course not. Now, that's true. Crazy people do crazy things in the name of religion, even if it is inconsistent with what that religion teaches. Here we have, from the Associated Press, a report of the violence in Myanmar. This was dated January of 2014. Uh, we have these crazy uh, Buddhist monks actually killing Muslims, but look at the number that they say were killed in uh, that year. Um, or actually those two years since 2012, 280. Now compare that to the people that have been killed by radical Islam. 
I mean, again, this is the problem, is that you're talking about a religion of one and a half billion people, and certainly it becomes very easy to just simply paint them all with a single brush by saying, well, in Saudi Arabia they can't drive, and so therefore that's somehow representative of Islam. It's representative of Saudi Arabia. Right, but I mean, look, Saudi, Arab Saudi Arabia is the, one of the most, if not the most extremist Muslim country in the world. In the month that we've been talking about ISIS and their terrible actions in uh, Iraq and Syria, Saudi Arabia, our closest ally, has beheaded 19 people. Nobody seems to care about that because Saudi Arabia uh, sort of preserves our national interests. Okay. You know that is a good point. We turn a blind eye uh, in America to the things that go on in these very extreme Muslim countries, especially ones that can offer us what we need so badly all the time, which is the black gold that runs the nation. However, these people who live in Saudi Arabia that do these things are only acting in accordance with what they read in the Quran and the Hadith. Stoning and mutilation and those barbaric practices should be condemned and criticized by everyone. The actions of individuals and societies and countries like Iran, like Pakistan, like Saudi Arabia must be condemned because they don't belong in the 21st century. But to say Muslim countries as though Pakistan and Turkey are the same, as though Indonesia and Saudi Arabia are the same, as though somehow what is happening in the most extreme forms of these repressive countries, these autocratic countries, is representative of what's happening in every other Muslim country, is frankly, and I use this word seriously, stupid. There's a lot of antsiness out here now because of ISIS and what right. people see on TV. And yet, uh, at the same time, this is a religion that is ancient, that is honorable, that is venerable. Why is it that we get confused between the two? We don't do it with Christianity because there's a lot of terrorism going on <laughs> and being promoted in the identity movement and white supremacist sure. groups within uh, Christianity itself. Um, look, I'm sure, Eric, you could dig back and find one instance. I'm not sure what Michael Eric Dyson was referring to, but I'm sure you could find one instance of white supremacy. But to conflate Christianity, a religion legitimately of peace, mm -hmm. uh, with ISIS and radical Islam and defend radical Islam, to me, is just shameful. I don't think he was defending radical Islam. And let's not he forget, sure was. He said we're getting all antsy about well, he wasn't ISIS. defending it. He was defending the notion that we shouldn't overreact to something that's not a threat to the United States. But look, let's not forget the history here. Wait, you, you don't think ISIS is a threat to the United States? No. This is from the American Center of Law and Justice website. Look at these six things. Let's start with number two. ISIS is far more brutal than Al-Qaeda ever was. It has more financial resources. It controls more territory day by day. And word is, it has seized some uranium uh, that could make a dirty bomb. This is going to be a problem, folks. It is a threat to America. I don't think You're, it is. It's really, a regional threat. You don't threat. think radical Islam is a threat to no, the United States? No, absolutely not. Really? Ask those 2,799 people who uh, died on 9 11. I think they have a, a different answer. 9 11 does not. Re so, it was 13 years, years ago. And, and the difference so between Michael Eric Dyson was trying to say that Christians are homophobes. Well, you know what the difference is? Love the sinner, hate the sin. However, in Islam, it is to behead and kill gays. Wait a second. Very I, different what, what, than Andrea, Christians. Are you both religions, Christianity and Islam, are peaceful religions. In each religion, there are extreme elements. In the history of this country, we've had the Klan, who at one time said in the name of Christianity, by any means necessary, they wanted to go and commit acts of terrorism. And in fact, yeah, they the did. are not coming to get us, as you're suggesting. And this kind oh, of hysteria... Tell that to the woman this, in Oklahoma. This kind of hysteria based on isolated incidents is bad for the country. Are it you is, calling you're scare radical mongering. Islamic terrorism you, an isolated you, incident? I am saying that you're pointing out some wow. incidents that wow. are scaremongering people and not properly representing the religion of, of Islam. Let me just, let me just finish. 
I'm scaring people, I think the beheading videos have accurately scared enough people around the world. And by the way, more Muslims than Christians have died at the hands of radical Islam. I want to be clear that Christianity is a beautiful and peaceful religion, as is Islam. And there are extreme elements in both religions, and we conflate the extremists with a huge majority no, of no, people no, in don't. each religion yes, that don't. make it exactly what it is. D yeah. Dyson did. Michael Eric Dyson did. And I'm saying that he had a point in that the army of God, these radical groups, anti-abortion, the people who have killed in the name of Christ, have misused You're Christianity in some of the same ways of radical, radical Islams have used. Okay, let me do this.